right, guys. We're heading literally to my backyard. Yeah, yeah buddy. All right. All right. This one's close to home. I take this one personal. Today, we're headed to zone nine of the Alaska Triangle, also known as Alaska's breadbasket. We're going after the Klondike Crawler. The Klondike Crawler is reported to be seven to eight feet tall, 700 plus pounds. It's been reported to walk on its knuckles, much like a gorilla. Now, I've never heard of a Bigfoot walking on all fours or on, a, no. on its knuckles no. before. Klondike Crawler was first reported in the Western Yukon in the 1700s by the local natives. When the Klondike gold miners started moving into the area, it kind of pushed him out of his territory. So population growth could potentially have driven it here to Alaska. Right, and when he got to the Matanuska Valley, Zone 9, found a bunch of farms and found easy pickings. So what the heck, he set up shop here. You know, we're getting reports of this thing stealing livestock. These reports, the animal is gone, just gone. Now, that's taken food off of my plate and money out of my neighbor's pockets. I get my food out there by your neighbors. I get my beef and I get my vegetables. We got to fix this problem. You know, if something starts coming into our backyard and screwing around, that's my friends, my neighbors. He's going down. Hell yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, right. Damn right. Any creature that messes with my neighbors and my friends is asking for a beat down, you know? <laughs> you know, in my prime, I used to be a boxer, you know? I'd like to take that damn Klondike crawler on a damn 12 round fight, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting my money on fans. Oh, yeah. you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's time for this Klondike crawler to get his ass kicked. Right. Damn straight. We need to give this uh, Klondike crawler a Leroy ass whooping. Whatever a Leroy ass whooping is, I'm with you, Dudley. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's the worst one you can get. <laughs> there we go. Let's do it. There's our man. We're getting ready to meet up with our first eyewitness. He's a farmer named Critter. I'm Krusty. I'm Critter. Farming is the identity of Palmer and the Matanuska Valley. Critter and his family have been working this land since the 1930s, and they're still here. You got a great name there, Critter. How'd you get that name? Jason Critters. Now, catching Critters, huh? Oh, yeah. You have much trouble with uh, moose getting in the crops out here? Um, once in a while, you know, you got to be on top. But, I yeah. mean, we got a fence along part of it. You know, a couple years ago, something was stealing our broccoli out of the damn garden, and I thought it was a moose. Next morning, I get up and look out the window, and hell, there's face out there not on that stuff. <laughs> well, you should invite me over. <laughs> we heard you had some kind of an encounter out here. We'd love to hear about it. Yeah, four and a half, five weeks ago. Okay. About 4.30 in the morning, I woke up, and you could hear a cow bellowing. I mean, it's not like your average, you know, beller when they're a little bit in trouble. Right. And the first thing that come to my mind was bear. So I grabbed the shotgun and I headed out. And when I got out there, you know, the bellerin had stopped. So I went over and I took a quick count. Well, I was missing one, which was a two-year-old. I heard a noise and you could you could hear it cracking. And when I got around the one corner, I seen something black. You know, just just caught a glimpse of it. Well, that's when it paused for a second, you know, and looked. So this creature or whatever it was saw you. You damn right it saw me. I mean, it looked me straight in the eyes. Mm. I mean, it, it was on two legs, upright, and it had the cow under its arm like a football. Holy oh. cow. And how heavy is that calf? You're looking at five, 600 pounds. Damn! At night, the farmers will typically bring their livestock up closer to the barn and the farm buildings to provide a little added protection from the predators in the area. But what was really unusual about this situation is that it took it so close from the house. Would you mind taking us out to where you send us? No, I'd be more than happy to. Yeah, let's okay. go. Oh, well, All right. Check this out. Yeah, you can lead the way. With my years of outdoor experience here in Alaska, logic tells me that's a bear that he's got here. The tree that he went underneath is right there, so I'd say let's stop here. OK. Boy, five weeks ago, there wasn't no leaves on these trees. No. Well, after I'd heard the noise, I come down to here. I was standing almost in this exact spot, and there's the down tree where I seen it go under, dragging the cow. Wow. 
Come on, Red, let's go check it out. Yeah, let's go. We're well in the spring break up here. These bears are coming out with an appetite. It ain't nothing for one to grab that 500-pound yearling calf. Look at this. Drag marks. Yep. Hey, Critter. Yeah? This about the area where you saw it and he looked back at you? Yep. You see that broken branch right there? Right here? Yeah, he cleared down by about three, four inches. About seven feet. A little over. Son of a bitch. That's a big critter. Critter's got a problem out here with a big creature. It walks in, takes what it wants, and just walks out and leaves. If it's all right with you, we'd like to come back out here at night and do a little snooping around and see if we can see any sign of this creature. Yeah, come on out anytime you want. Well, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you, man. At this point, I'm not sure if we've got an especially brazen bear that's taking livestock or if we've got some sort of a Bigfoot. But what I do know, Critter's got a problem. We're going to come fix it for him. Look like we're in a potato field. We're starting our night recon on the edge of Critter's farm. The farms in this area all butt up against dense forests and mountains. There is all kinds of cover for animals to hide. Bears, wolves, and possibly Bigfoots. Critter seems like a believable guy and all that, but you know, I'm not 100% convinced that he didn't see a bear. You know, he said he's lost cows to bears. So on that note, we gotta be careful out here tonight. This one is close to our homes and even closer to our hearts. Let's get out there, see what we can find. There you go. Ready to go. Ready to roll. Let's get after it. See anything over there, please? I don't see anything. We're in spring break up now. The bears are coming out of the den. They're hungry. They're going to be looking for food. We got to be real careful. Look at that. Looks like something came through there. It looked like they even slowed down. You don't just rip that canvas. Something did. If there's really a Bigfoot in the area snatching livestock, there's got to be evidence. There has to be drag marks, footprints, carcasses, or something to show that he's feeding in the area. Not very far from the barn up there. And that creature didn't have to go far across open ground. That was a bold move on his part. Yeah, not showing much fear of humans. <laughs> 